Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here with the SB Trade Desk Midweek Strategy Webinar for 6.13. It's June 13th. I still cannot believe, by the way, that the Blues, I'm in St. Louis, if you don't know that, uh, that the Blues won the NHL Stanley Cup. It is absolutely surreal here. I, I, I'm still, I'm in shock. Anyway, getting to the markets, FX here. Um, first of all, can you guys hear me and can you see the screen? We've got DXY up, daily chart. It's all good, says Peter. All right, so look, we have looked at this forever, right? Um, we can count this as complete. Um, the big question being is the rise from here, from January, up to just a couple of weeks ago on May 23rd, is it complete? Pete says, congrats, go Blues. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, it's unreal here. I I, I mean, I can't even describe it with words, it's unreal. Um, so I wanna kind of talk about this a little bit. You know, we've come into huge levels. You know, we've looked at this forever. If we go to a longer term chart, look, you've seen it so many times. The parallels. There's really no reason to go over this anymore. We've, we've looked at it a ton. Um, going to the short term chart here, the question is like, where do we find if, if indeed this is actually the beginning of a bigger drop? The question is, where do we find um, a lower high? Right. And in the, the update last night, I laid out three levels that I thought we could see a lower high. One would be here, more or less a couple ticks higher, uh, 97.15. All right, that's the reaction low from May 1st. The second would be 97.37, which is the high from uh, June 5th, which would be if this is a one, two, three, four, five, truncated fifth. Remember the Euro did have a real fifth wave. Uh, we nicked out the high on the Euro. So, you know, flip this over and we did make a slightly, uh, slight new high in Euro. This would be the fourth wave of one less degree, right? And the final level would really be 97.71. Um, and that to me is probably the most important level, right? Because that was resistance in December, more or less in November, and of course it was in March as well, right? So they also line up with parallels. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we get this figured out in the next couple of days. Uh, the intersection over here would be the 19th, which is gonna be next Wednesday. Intersection here is going to be on Monday, and this, of course, is more or less now. So we at least have levels that we know, um, you know, like what to watch for or where to watch for something. Um, and what I'll be watching for, I'm going to get into the volume thing. You know, I've been working with some 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 volume stuff on futures lately, and um, it's actually been really helpful. Uh, I use it mostly for daily and weekly stuff but on intraday stuff it's been you know interesting just to help with if you if you're at a level and you get a volume reversal it kind of gives you a little more confidence that you know it's important right so it's not the volume reversal itself it's the volume reversal combined with the uh the level and i'm going to show you some examples here um right you know it's happening currently with with kiwi and with aussie in particular all right, so we've got this. Now I wanna to go to a chart that we haven't looked at in a very long time. It's the German 10 year yield minus the US 10 year yield, right? So FX is essentially rate differentials. So let's go weekly. All right, so here's a weekly chart of German 10s minus US 10s. All right, you can see it's negative 2.347 right now. In other words, uh, US yields 2.347 over German. If we compare Euro to this, you get the idea, right? So what's happened recently is we actually have had a pretty good move. Go to daily. We have had a pretty good move in the yield differential, right? 
So when Euro was making these lows down here, you had a big divergence. Um, we didn't have the yield, the yield differential at new lows. It was making a higher low. It's actually a very bullish pattern. If you just looked at this, right? You'd be like, well, this looks pretty good. It's a huge wedge, been going on for like 10 years. And if we break out of here, this thing's really gonna fly. That's kind of my thinking with Euro in general. Um, I guess, you know, the question is how long can we wait? Because it, it seems like we've been waiting forever for something to happen. Um, and I, I don't, look, I don't know if I'm right, you know, in terms of the dollar bearish scenario. Um, I know there's plenty of arguments for both sides, but even those that, you know, that have been bullish the dollar, I mean, they can't be that pleased either because it's not like we've gone really anywhere. We're the same place we've been for, you know, since August last year. So what I'm getting at here is that we've got this divergence at the lows. Um, we're starting to move higher in the yield differential. It reminds me a lot of back in 2014. So 2014, look, Euro was going higher, rate differential is going lower. It's going on for a couple of years. Hopefully we don't have to wait for a couple of years. And what happened was finally the Euro collapsed and it caught up, right? You bottomed, yields bottomed, currency bottomed. Yields bottomed, currency bottomed. Yields bottomed in November, currency bottomed. And now we have this divergence or this non-confirmation. So it, it's at least another, I think, you know, a notch in the belt, if you will, for a possible um, turn for Euro to move higher. At the end of the day, of course, all that matters is price and we don't have anything in terms of a break on DXY, right? We talked about this in Sunday's update, and we really need that break below this wedge line and the 200-day average for that matter, right? 200-day average, wedge line, we got to break this in order to really get things going. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know what else to say. I don't think there is much else to say. So those three levels that I outlined on the short-term chart is really what, you know, I'm going to pay attention to over the next couple of, uh, the next week, really, the next Wednesday. All right, moving on. So Euro, Euro itself. Pretty clean five, right? One, two, three, four, five itself is five. One, two, three, four, five. Couldn't get to resistance, um, which was you know basically 1370, which frankly is a little disconcerting. I know at this point I'm splitting hairs, but I don't know. I don't like it when a market can't get to the level. It's almost, you know, it, being kind of thinking a, a bull case for Euro, you'd like to have it overshoot to show a little strength and then pull back uh, rather than fail short of the level. But as with DXY, we do know the levels to look at, and it's basically now. Um, would have liked a little bigger bounce. Actually, could have been a, a short up here. But it's now, and then it's this parallel right here. Okay, that was the, the perfect low. Um, I guess that was NFP right here. Okay, and that's going to be about 1230. And then you've got 1185. And 1185, of course, is huge because it's also – these lows from April, March, and of course, it's the 618 retrace of the entire rally from um, the Jan 1st, or I should say the first trading day of 2017, right? So this might be the biggest level. Um, you know, deep retracements in second waves, if that's what this is, right? Not uncommon. And the point is to get everyone wrong footed so that we can get a big move to the upside. So those are levels that I'm looking at. Now, British pound got a possible leading diagonal on the upside. I know it's unorthodox, but it is, you know, a possibility. And to me, it's the best count out there. And then a clear three down. And even, you know, the C here is a clear five down one, two, three, four, five. Um, we're right at support. 
you know, we tried along early in the week um, on this level where we are now, didn't work out, overshot it, came back. It's been a super quiet week. You know, I guess everyone's waiting for G20 and or some clarity on the trade situation, but um, I guess that brings in some weekend risk. But look, cable, we're at support, okay? We've got a clear three down from the highs up here in March. I'm looking higher. Doesn't mean that there's an entry at this point because we need to see something, but I'm thinking higher in cable. All right, Kiwi and Aussie, I mentioned the, um, the, the volume stuff. So we're at support in both of them. Um, right here, 65.58 is 6.18 in Kiwi, right? The long-term chart, I think, is a beauty. I believe it's right. No, nope, that's Kiwi in. I believe it's right here. So here's the fork all the way back to the 2011 high. And this magenta parallel right here, which was resistance for years, ended up becoming or support back here in uh, May of last year. Support again in January and support again just three weeks ago. So look, possibility that this is a one and this is a two and that we're in a three or a C higher. I know it's tough to envision um, given everything that's going on, but you know, these things aren't, before you go into a big move, it's not supposed to make a lot of sense. You know, so this is where I think the move could be. Now, clearly you have to hold these lows, otherwise you're just in simple breakdown mode. The next level will basically be a test of the low slash, you know, 61.30, uh, uh, 2015 low is 62. But I'm thinking higher here. Aussie, 69, I have the bold black line here. Daily reversal support, again, for those of you that may be new, what does that mean? Daily reversal support is the low day of the move. Make a candle so you can see the closes. It's the low day of the move, which is here. And then it's just that close, right? That's right there, 68,997. Let's call it 69, right? And we're there. It's kind of the last support, last possible support. So you need to turn up now. So, all right, getting to the volume thing, if we go to hourly charts, you can see that. Get rid of the breakouts. All right, so this is hourly. And now, again, you're, this is not a signal or a system or anything. I'm not saying that, you know, this is going to tell you the highs and the lows. When you, when you combine it with a level though, it, it's interesting, right? And these blue bars here mean that you had heavy selling the hour before, this in this case an hourly chart, but the bar before, and this is hourly, and then heavy buying on the next bar. So it kind of tries to catch people off guard, um, capitulation into a low or into a high, and you can see how that works, right? So I'm not going to pay attention to every single one. It's only important when it's at a level that makes sense. In this case, it makes sense. So we may have seen a low two hours ago, um, you know, in, in Kiwi. Now, how to trade this? Well, I want to see us, you know, hold this the rest of the day. And then maybe it's a long at market, right? I'll write about it in the update. That was Kiwi. Let's go to Aussie. Get rid of the breakdown bars. All right, so same idea, right? We just got one right here. Again, at the 6 a.m. bar. Um, so, you know, five hours ago. So if this can hold, then, hold on one sec. So if this can hold, then we're good. We'd be looking higher. And really with Aussie in particular, you can't go much lower. Otherwise, you're at new lows. And look, that could happen. You could have a non-confirmation with uh, Aussie at new lows and, and, and Kiwi at, um, at a higher low. But I just wanted to kind of bring that in. So I don't know. Does anyone have any questions on the volume stuff? 
you know, I'm open to answer any questions on the volume stuff. I run it on the dailies, weeklies, even monthlies, but I run it for all different assets, uh, stocks, commodities, and everything. But, you know, for timing purposes, it's pretty useful on um, hourly and four hour charts. You know, like here's the NASDAQ, for example. All right, we got a four hour buy down here. Doesn't seem like we have any questions so far on the on the volume stuff, but if you have anything, please ask because I'd be more than happy to answer it. Uh, it's a new tool for me as far as using these uh, capitulation volume uh, reversals and I'm finding it quite useful. All right, moving on. CAD trade got off to a decent start and then we're right back basically where we entered. Um, but I'm going to sit with this, you know, it's sometimes you just got to take a shot. And at this point, um, you know, after having a wedge break, uh, after having, you know, a hard down, also the vol daily volume reversal on CAD we had, right. Um, and now, you know, we're basically trading within a new bearish, channel so median line came back hit a parallel perfect support perfect support former support becomes resistance i'm fine sitting with this trade right i don't want to tighten the stop too much uh you're going to get nicked out you know it's a relatively tight stop and the reward is quite large considering that we broke a wedge and i do think that we can get all the way down to 2970 or so uh, before all is said and done here on dollar cad and just if you look at the rally by the way from the 2017 low you know just simple right like it's overlapping right this is all overlapping you know and this is clearly from the uh the jan low this is clearly overlapping this is clearly a correction at least the way i look at the market this is corrective okay so corrective sharp down impulsive to me the bigger move is down just based on that simple simple observation all right dollar yen um i'm gonna see a let's see a funny a funny joke this is dollar yen this is a weekly chart this is the bar for this week we have traded in a 64 pip range in dollar yen this week i mean what gives right so as uh, i wrote last night essentially you are looking at 10901 to 10915 as resistance that's got to hold in my opinion in order to kind of just keep a, a downward bias on dollar yen um there's a lot there 20 day average which is not on this chart this is a four hour chart but you got former lows center line right which has a lot of important touches here from the fork here back from the march high uh trend line if you draw it off of the high from may right there's a ton of stuff there so i am looking lower in dollar yen i would love for us to get one more little pop if we do look for that 109 uh, to 109 15 or so area to hold and then look lower towards you know 107 20 is the measured level but lower parallel is a little lower than that right now because as time passes obviously we go a little lower so that's where we're looking there and i also do not want to forget about the long-term chart of dollar yen okay i know i've brought this up a bunch over the last couple webinars but i think it's quite important because the potential is there we are testing by the way this huge triangle line I mean, no wonder we've stopped here and consolidated, right? It's really a decision point, um, a point of contention, one might say. But the bearish potential is significant, okay? We're talking about, if this is correct, and this is a big A, and this is a big triangle B, we're talking about all the way down towards, you know, basically 95 uh, is where you're looking. 
Now, the timing's the hard part because we could sit here and consolidate for weeks and weeks and months and whatever, and nothing could happen. But I would love to trade with the larger trend. And at this point, not just based on wave counts, but based on moving averages, um, you know, trend is down here. So, again, 109 uh, flat to 109.15. All right, I think I've covered pretty much everything in the FX world. Um, let's take a quick look at some equity stuff. All right, so we looked at some channels here the other day, S&Ps. This is a good example of parallel extensions on a channel. So this is original slope, right? First two highs, extend it from the low, hits the low. So this is obviously a, a channel worth following. And then you extend half the channel up, it's resistance, extend the full channel up, and you actually get up close to the highs, but it would be up here. So these are the levels to watch. Um, now it's been slow going here, right, over the last week or so, but if we can move down towards this level, this is where this is where things get interesting. If you can get down here towards basically 2820 at this point, then this is S&P futures, then you'd be looking for support here. OK, and if you bounce from there, whatever, it's a trade. Um, it's not to predict anything about whether they're going to do highs, but it's support. If you crash through it, then something's going on on the downside and this is a bigger decline. So really, all I care about is essentially here in 2820s. That's it. Right. This is put call ratio, by the way, which right now is 0.72. Um, let's see here, all right. Crude, I'm sure some of you guys saw the overnight news in crude um, explosion of tankers and crude popped like three and a half percent on it. Really not a big deal considering we've declined over 20% from the highs here in April, but we are at a level. Um, you know, this is the 618 of the entire rally from the December low. Uh, it's also go to daily. It's also the high here from June of 2016. That's right, June of 2016, three years ago, we were at the same spot. Crude has been flat since then. So if you fell asleep three years ago and woke up, you'd say that nothing happened. Uh, and we're also at a parallel extension. So channel extension more or less holding that right i get it you spike below it but here's the actually four hour closes you can see it's actually right on it it's kind of interesting so my thinking is that we do try to trade higher here in crude um i would be looking for resistance around 55 to 56 right and if we do resume lower which is not my base case but if we do then you're talking 4750 or so which is the 786 retracement and also the full parallel extension of this you know we've seen a little bit of um kind of dislocation between crude and the stock market lately um you know they were kind of trending together for a while and crudes continue to break down while equities have held up pretty well so you know is there a change here is that like permanent or are we going to go back into you know the two moving together i don't know i have to look at each market based, based on its own chart based on its own merit and at this point, considering we're bouncing from here, I think we do move a little bit higher. So, you know, some may say, well, if you think we're going higher in crude, then we're going higher in stocks. It's not necessarily true. That could happen, right? But I don't want to predict one market with another market. All right, metals have been interesting lately. Um, gold and silver are picking up a bit. So this is a four hour gold chart. I actually want to show you the longer term gold chart. All right, so here's the really long term gold chart. This is all the way back to the seventies. This is basically the entire channel uh, since Bretton Woods. And look where we bottomed. 
right? So gold's testing highs from last year um, and from February of this year. And if we get through here, basically just know this number, like write down the number. So write down essentially like 1430, which you know what that happens to be as well. It's gonna be that high from, what is that, September of 2013. So it's clearly an important spot. Um, you know, center line wasn't precise up until really recently. I say recently, you gotta remember this is a long-term chart, but 2017 it was resistance, last year it was resistance, and if we get up there, it's a level that you gotta know. Um, beyond that, you know, I don't wanna think too far ahead, but beyond that, you're talking 1700, so whatever. Basically, just know 1430s is a big spot for gold. The silver chart, you're gonna remember this one, uh, the really long-term parallel in silver. We're actually we're actually still below it. Silver's lagged pretty bad um, compared to gold. So, hold on, let's get this moving, all right. Okay, so here's the deal with, with, with silver. That level is 1540, okay? You get, you get above there, and I think there's something to work with with silver. Until that happens, it's going to be tough to have like an actual precious metal bull market, right? Um, and you can see this line has validity. I mean, even, you know, looking at shorter term moves like August last year, perfect resistance, perfect support right here in Jan um, on the 22nd, and also resistance right here on April 19th. So we've got the right level to look at in terms of silver. And again, 1540 is the important spot for that. All right, what is going on in equities? Pretty quiet. I guess everyone's waiting for G20. Looks like Euro moved up 10 pips. It's a big move these days. Let's see if we're getting anything on the volume stuff. Nothing yet. All right. Well, do you, are there any questions or anything? I mean, I know that there's just not a whole lot to talk about right now. Um, just know this. I will be talking a lot about the volume stuff moving forward. So whether it's in, you know, the swing updates or whether it's in tweets, um, you know, I'll explain a little bit more about it, you know, in writing in, in the swing updates and talking about like what the calculations are as far as percentage of volume. Um, and above what average, but you know, ex ex expect to hear more about that going forward. Abby says, hey, I'm new here. Do you look at spot gold and silver as well? Absolutely. Um, you must have just missed what we went through, but yes. So I just went through spot gold and silver. So this is silver right here. And I went through some longer term charts, but the the thing is, the longer term charts actually show you the more important levels. So here's silver, and essentially, um, Abby, you can't get extremely excited on anything on the upside for silver until you get above this magenta parallel. All right, and the best example that I could give is what was happening back here in 2008. So we were bouncing on it, we came below it, it was resistance, we got above it, it was support, and then we took off, right? Fast forward to where we are now. And hold on. You can see here just in January it was support, but we, we fell below. So we got to get back above it, and that's gonna be you know 1540, right? And then gold. Very bullish setup in the terms of, you know, hitting the downtrend line uh, top side of it as support. And if we take off on the upside, I'm sure there'll be a lot of excitement. A lot of people, you know, will be talking about gold um, heading a lot higher and it may very well. But 
my point is here, pay attention to the 1434 area. That's the uh, September, or sorry, August 2013 high, okay? So on a shorter term basis, for more timing purposes, I am favorable to gold here. Let me get rid of this because it's a little sloppy, but this was the chart that I showed the other day. So basically we have a channel, the top the parallel was support, right? Support, and we hit it two days ago. So yeah. You know, I like gold here. I think we're heading higher. You know, as long as you're holding this low, this low from uh, from two days ago, from the 11th, you got to look higher in gold. You know, and the answer, you know, what I'm looking for is 1434. I'll be asking about the gold and silver ratio. Is it going to stay here at these levels? That I do not know. Um, I can tell you that. There's been a lot of talk about the gold-silver ratio. Let's look at that. Hold on. Gold-silver ratio. So people have been saying for years that the gold-silver ratio is too high. I don't know about that. I do know it's at the upper end of its range, but we could very well end this whole move with a big spike to the upside, right? And there's nothing to say that the gold-silver ratio has to stop at where it was in 1990. Right? But until we see something change materially, um, like a big reversal or something dramatic, you know, there's no reason to fight this, right? Gold is clearly the um, the outperformer. It's the one that's in an uptrend. It's the one acting well technically, while silver is the laggard. While I will say that longer term, I think silver does have more potential based on the simple fact that we are toward the upper end of the historical range. It does not mean that trading wise it's a good idea to fade this right you could very well just go right through it get everyone excited wait for a wall street journal article talking about silver and gold and how gold's so expensive and it's the best thing ever and then fade that move all right no problem, Abby. Thank you and welcome. Welcome to SB Trade Desk. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, hopefully, G20 gets things moving a little bit more than they are now. Um, I know it's been quiet for a long time, but you know, thought that we had maybe a little vol breakout here two weeks ago. Uh, of course, this week things have quieted down again, but can't last like this forever. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye.